Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Tara Kareem, and I'm the program manager of grants at Arts KC. And before we begin, we would like to acknowledge the land in which we are currently occupying. We at Arts KC honor and recognize the Native Americans, Indigenous, and First Nations people who historically and presently call this land home, included our 98 tribal groups, including but not limited to the Kickapoo, Kansas, Osage, Missouri, Potawatomi, Sioux, and many more. We commit to educating ourselves further and stewarding the land we inhabit. For those of you who are just listening today or who might have some visual impairments, I'll go ahead and describe myself. So my pronouns are she, her. I am in my early 30s. I have red hair. It's kind of pulled back today, pale skin, blue eyes, and I'm wearing a black shirt. And with that, I will hand it over to Steph to introduce yourself, Steph, and um, yeah. Hi everybody, um, my name is Steph Shannon. I am the director of the Kansas City Film Office and I have the great privilege of being the Kansas City Film Commissioner. That last title is an industry facing title. Usually people in the industry know what that means. Uh, what that means for them uh, when they are filming in an area is that my office is uh, a great first point of contact and we are the keeper and of, of as many resources we can get our hands-on um, to offer to them. Things like the locations database, uh, caveat, do not, we do not take the place of a location scout. It's just to help people uh, understand what might be available here. Um, also the production guide, uh, which lists almost all of our industry professionals. And many of them are up to date with credits. I know many of them are not, but I can't express how often I use it to refer to. So just kind of keep that in mind as you guys are working out there. I know you're busy, but when you can update your credits, please do. Um, also wanna mention that there are new designations in the production guide. There are, you can identify as a women owned, a minority owned, veteran owned, um, and owned, you own yourself. So we're, we don't, you don't have to necessarily be a business officially to designate yourself in any category like that. Um, I've been in this job for almost nine years, uh, formerly under Visit KC, the tourism organization for the region. And now I'm inside of the mayor's office. So I work for the office of Mayor Quentin Lucas. Um, and now the film office is officially housed inside of the city where it will live going forward uh, for the, for hopefully for the foreseeable and beyond the foreseeable future. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm really excited to partner with Arts KC, who's administering these grants for filmmakers. Last year was the very first year that they had film specific grants. This will be the second year. And not only that, they've expanded the offering this year. So I'm excited for this webinar. I'm very privileged to have this position and I, and I love my job. And I welcome all of you here today. I will describe myself for those of you that are not uh, watching or are visually impaired. Um, I am a brown woman. I am 50 years old as of this week, this coming Monday, actually. And um, I've been in different facets of the industry myself, um, sometimes in front of the camera, a lot of times behind the camera as a producer, former director, of commercial director. Um, I have brown hair right now. I'm wearing a bright blue shirt and some very thick black glasses. So that is me. Awesome. Thank you, Steph. We are so grateful to work with Steph on these on these grants. It, we really couldn't do it without her. So a big thank you to Steph. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. So patience with me. Hopefully you can see a slideshow. Um, we already did our introduction. So here's what we're going to talk about today. We'll start pretty broad and talk about the legacy of Terry Rogers and the purpose of these grants. And then we'll get more and more specific talking about the eligibility, the timeline, applications, evaluation, and some tips for success as well. And I'll hand it over to Steph to talk about Terry Rogers. So Terry Rogers uh, is a former boss of mine. She was a 
a great mentor to me. She was, um, she was uh, somebody who really championed me getting this job that I have currently. Um, I love Terry. I also respect Terry highly. She was uh, continued on as a film office advisor and she is the former chair of the film commission board before the office was officially reestablished. Uh, she also is known by many in our industry as owning the largest production company in Kansas City, which became Hint, formerly Take Two and T2 Productions. Um, she was always, always giving back. So not only was she a member of the Arts KC board and a jurist for so many of the grants at Arts KC, but she was also um, a major part of the Crossroads community um, as a volunteer, as a board member, also a streetcar board member. I mean, really the list goes on and on and on about her volunteerism in the community. So she was a great leader in our film industry. Um, she was a great leader in our city. Um, one of the things about her that is so important and why we really wanted her to have a legacy by way of these grants is that she was really known for connecting with people, making time for people, and then uplifting them as much as she could. Um, a lot of young people in our industry met with her at one time or another, or worked for her one time or another, or worked for her as a contract worker, freelance worker. Um, and so she was able to give employment to all those people. But time and time again, I have heard the same story. I met with Terry and next thing I knew I was offered a job or I met with Terry and then I was, I, you know, had X, Y, Z uh, opportunity. And that's what these grants are about is making sure that we're trying, you know, that we are stewards of creating opportunity for people. Um, she passed in 2018. Um, she died of cancer. She has two kids. She has a husband. Um, they are all involved uh, in some way in this, uh, these grant offerings. Um, so potentially you'll get to meet them, especially as we, you know, throw some events around, around uh, the, the grants and we hope you attend those and so keep supporting those too. Um, so next slide. Um, so here, here are the grant offerings. This first slide is about the filmmakers grants. So this year um, we have two $10,000 grants. One is, is targeted at a female identifying director. The other is open to any gender. We, we're hoping to help foster uh, experience um, and creativity for early career directors. Um, this is a non-documentary uh, category. So it has to be the sh a short film narrative, which is under 30 minutes. Um, ambitious projects of risk, growth, and change for the filmmaker that make a positive impact on the community is, is the goal. And the funding is meant to support the process of production, which is the filming part, of course, or post-production. And all of you know, it is a feat to make a film. $10,000 may not even cover everything for your short film project, but we do hope that it creates uh, some relief for a filmmaker because 10,000 is not all, a small amount of money, although we know it doesn't go all the way all the time. And we'll talk more about budgets and kind of take a look at how that plays into this whole process of uh, being the grantee. Yeah, and I will just add that um, we also hope to support you beyond just the funding as well. So we throw in a membership to Film Independent and a subscription to Movie Maker Magazine, but we also hope to connect you with mentors, um, possibly people who are on the committee um, and other people in the filmmaking industry so that um, you know, you're not just getting a check from us and then see you later. We'll, we'll be here to help promote the film. We'll be here to help connect you with people. So there's some support beyond the funding as well. And featured in the, in the photo is Bridie O'Connor. She was the inaugural recipient of the Terry Rogers Film Grant last year. And it's great to hear that she's in production this month. 
on her project. So we, we, Tara has seen some of her production stills and we're super, super excited to see, uh, see the project as it unfolds. I just worked on it. Did you? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. It was a fun time. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Okay, and then this year we're also unveiling a screenwriting award. Uh, this is a small award, $1,000, but it's also a very easy application process. Um, and we are looking for scripts where Kansas City or the region is highlighted as a place and or that prioritize diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, those, those two aspects will be given special consideration in the evaluation process. Did you want to say anything else about that, Steph? Um, I think that when you talk about the ease of it, we all know we do understand writing a full length screenplay is not an easy thing. Um, I, I think that there are a good many people who have had something that they've been working on. Maybe it's time to dust it off and give it another look, give it another pass and go ahead and just submit it. Um, We'll, we'll take full length feature film scripts or TV pilot scripts for, for this consideration, and these are full length. Um, so just, just a note there, we know the process for, you know, turning in your pages, you know, your, your full script is pretty easy, but we just want to acknowledge that writing a full script is not easy, but that's also why we wanted to put together a, an award, even though it's not that large, it just, we want to start fostering this talent because everything starts with a script. Everything must start with a script. And to have people read it and give some feedback is highly invaluable to make the best possible script you can. It's a feat to create any kind of production, whether it's small or long, but you're going to have a better chance if you have the best possible script. So this is exciting too. We would like, you know, year over year to have like a lot of. Kansas City area films in this hopper. And then who knows, hopefully these these will have a chance of getting made as short proof of concepts through this program. And or someday somebody will option it or you'll create your own full length feature film right here in Kansas City. So that's all. Okay, so I'll go over the timeline really quick. This is also on the website. Um, the deadline to apply for both filmmakers or screenwriters is July 24th. Um, that activity dates at the top, that only applies to filmmakers. So we're looking for projects to be in production or post-production in between June 15th of this year, so last week, and April 17th of 2024. And that April 17th date is pretty flexible, you know, within a couple weeks or a month. So don't feel like, oh no, I'm, I was planning on filming on April 18th, I can't apply. Like there's some flexibility there, so be aware of that. Um, but hopefully it's, a, it's within that timeline um, somewhat. So the deadline is July 24th, committees for both uh, grants will evaluate in August, and then we'll have a decision in late September. For the Filmmakers Award, there's also an impact report. So how we have been doing it at Arts KC is we give out 80% of the grant upon the award. And then once you're finished with production and post-production, then you'll fill out a, a really brief impact report telling us how it went. And then we'll we'll issue that final payment of twenty percent. Um, I see a question. Okay, thanks, Steph. You're welcome. So, um, okay. And I, when we look at eligibility, I'll I'll double check that too, or I'll we'll talk about that more. But the question is, can multiple? Okay, let's get to eligibility and the, all those questions will be answered. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Steph, do you want to start us off? Sure. Okay. So elig eligibility. Um, so this is for adult people. This is for uh, folks 18 of year, years of age or older. Um, 
It's not to fund a student film. Last year, I just wanted to kind of note that we did have some people doing thesis work uh, for, um, for their graduate programs. And, and we, we were able to consider, consider those, um, but we had to talk about it with the filmmaker first. So just a note to if anybody's in that situation on this webinar. Um, so the project must be new film video or digital production work in the short film narrative genre, non-documentary. Applicants must assume the role of the director with artistic and creative control. Uh, they must own the copyright. They have to own, you know, have the script op option. They must own the copyright of their production and have artistic, budgetary, and editorial control over their project. And Tara, do you, do you want me to keep going here? Because this this answer is part of the question uh, for for the what the chat question was about uh, residential requirements. For, for this, for these two $10,000 grants, you must reside in five county, Jackson County metro area. Um, I think last year we had some applicants outside the area who were co-directing with somebody that did live in the area. Is that right, Tara? Do you recall? Yeah, they were working with a local crew, I think. Um, but we only had one applicant from outside the area. So this year we did narrow it down, yeah. I think. We tightened to, it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and like Tara said, things are reasonable. So applications from adjacent counties can be considered if the project takes place within our service area, which is the five counties, Jackson, Clay, Platt, and Johnson and Wyandotte. Um, but the five county area is the main priority. Um, you must be in the early stages of a film career that kind of, I know that's a little bit subjective. Um, you can definitely have gone to festival. We're just, we're, we just don't want people dipping in that kind of are considered very established. Um, if they've made several feature films already, um, they, they might not be considered early stage of film career, um, but they might be. So it depends on kind of the quality, the caliber and where those films have have ended up, you know, ha have, has it been given distribution? Ha have a lot of people seen the film? So those things will be taken under consideration, of course. Um, special consideration will be given to the projects where Kansas City or the region serves as, as a kind of a character or as highlighted as a place in the project. And special consideration will be given to projects that do prioritize diversity, equity, and inclusion. This is a mission of Arts KC and the Kansas City Film Office. Um, and one yeah, uh, application, out, huh? oh, I'm hearing things. Only one application per applicant will be considered for uh, the filmmaking grants. Okay, any questions about this eligibility? Someone asked about St. Louis. Unfortunately, St. Louis would be too far. Um, so, the applicant has to be living in the five county region. So, I mean, if you, like Steph said, if you were co-directing with someone here, that, that could be a possibility, um, but the, the applicant has to have a Kansas City address. Douglas County is an adjacent county, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So as long as, I didn't look at a map, but yeah, that's where Lawrence sure. Lawrence is in Douglas County. So yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it touches Johnson County, right? Yeah. So that uh, that's an adjacent county. So as long as you're shooting in the five counties, it would be eligible. Any other questions about this? You might just reach out to us if you're a student, uh, and we can talk through that. I think. Last year, the student project, um, they were a student, but it wasn't for a school project necessarily. And so that's where we, we said, okay, we'll accept it. Um, so you might just reach out to us and we'll talk through that if that's the case. Okay. And then the final one, so since it's um, short film narrative genre, that does not include documentaries, installations, 
games or interactive work, new media, or any of the any of the things you see on the list there, commercial, industrial, music videos, informational, student work. Um, so, and it says that those work should not be submitted as work samples. Um, where that's something else to think about when you're applying is what work samples to you. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we look at the application. Um, applicants only receive one grant from ArtsKC within the same fiscal year. This is actually the first grant of our fiscal year. So everyone should be in the clear on that. Um, if you get this grant, you would not be eligible to apply for, say, our inspiration grants, which are for individual artists or small groups of artists. Um, but if you apply to this grant and don't receive it, then you might think about inspiration grants. So that's something that you can, if you have questions about that, feel free to shoot me an email. But um, know that we only, you can only receive one grant from us within the same fiscal year. And um, applicants can apply to either Terry Rogers or Screenwriting Award, not both. And the reason for that is because we're evaluating them separately. And so we don't want to have the same recipient in both categories. We want to kind of spread the love and we wouldn't be able to determine that while we were evaluating. So that's something to think about. Um, this year, um, Either you can either apply to the filmmakers or screenwriting. Not both, unfortunately. Okay, for screenwriting, um, some of the same things, you have to be over the age of 18, you have to live in the five county region, um, it has to be feature or full length. So again, you can only receive one grant and you can only apply to either Terry Rogers filmmakers or Terry Rogers screenwriting. So. You're right, Steph, I don't see anything that says you can't apply with multiple scripts. And, so. and maybe that's a learning thing for us this year. So right now, those are our terms. We might have to put some kind of curb on it next year, but we'll have to like go through this process as a first, as a pilot year, and then make uh, tweaks to it to, to make it better for the jury and for applicants. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if, if Jerry Rapp, ha if that was you asking that question, um, you have a lot of scripts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> make good decisions. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you, yeah. Okay. Any other questions about eligibility for screenwriting, the screenwriting award? Okay. We'll keep moving. Um, I had a question. For the oh, screenwriting yeah, for if you were to submit a pilot script um would you need to have drafts at least of say the remainder of what potentially would be a series not no you do not so just the pilot and <clears throat> excuse me uh anything like uh, i guess like a timeline like board or however you know you see the you know what you think the future of whatever that script could be later down the line i am personally into all of it but for the purpose of this grant and the jury that's reading it it's they're they're they are readers that's what they're going to be okay, doing okay so it. none of okay so none of that like forward yeah. work, none of right. that later work is necessary right okay <laughs> although i love that you're thinking that way that's, yeah, you're a producer, a writer, um, you're thinking of all the things. So that's what we have to do. Our market is great for that reason. We wear all the hats. We get to. A lot of markets, you actually just get, you kind of get, you get one lane. So I like, we want to keep our market that way. Um, oh, is this mine? Sorry. Okay, screenwriting oh. guidelines. Um, so there are industry standards for how screenplays and pilots are formatted. It's something that you can look up. Um, if you do have questions about that, we can um, send you samples of what that looks like. But um, one of the things, these readers are professionals, so they will notice and be irritated, <laughs> which does not bode well for you um, 
if, if it's not formatted to industry standards. Um, so the, the feature scripts or pilots should be around 95 to 125. I'm sorry, features should be 95 to 125, pilots should be 55 to 65. Um, they should be predominantly in English. Um, each applicant can submit, oh, Jerry, here's our answer. Each applicant can only submit one script for consideration. I'm sorry, Tara and I did not, that didn't stick in our brain earlier. I, I apologize. I, I didn't think <laughs> when he asked, my first inclination was to say no, but I didn't, I was like, well, I'll just wait and see if it's on eligibility. Right. So I apologize too. I should have known that, but yeah, no, we, we, do. Typically, we typically only allow one application in all of our grant categories. So I thought that would be the case. I'm sorry. So you'll have to pick the one that's the best fit for the grant. Yeah. Um, must be an original work of the applicant. Um, if it's based on another person's life or upon a book or underlying uh, other underlying work, the applicant must secure any necessary rights to make any adaptations or to cover the story. Um, by entering the competition, you're acknowledging that you have secured all those rights. Um, if, and sometimes a submission does, involve two or more writers as applicants, the applicant must identify, we must, we must have a primary contact so that we have one person that we can go to and communicate with. And that contact is responsible for dispersing funds to any co-writers they have on the project. And Steph, uh, Courtney and Deidre are, work, are wondering about the page limit yeah. for pilots. I mean, that's just a general right there. I mean, it's within reason for, for pilots. I mean, those are just kind of general rules of thumb. If it's a little less, a little more, that's okay. Okay. I can't wildly be more though. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. Does that, did I, I answer your question enough? Courtney, Courtney was wondering about 30 pages for a pilot. No. For a full length, for a pilot, that would be like an hour long. Um, I think, I, do, I think that sounds pretty short to me for a, for a television pilot. Um, are you thinking of like a 30 minute TV show? Kind of like 30 Rock. 30 Rock was like okay. 23 minutes. Right. I think, okay. Built -in commercial. Yeah, so maybe that's the... Yeah, right. same here. Ours was a comedy, um, so it's it was thirty minutes. Uh -huh. I I mean I think absolutely if that if it's not an hour long television show and it's a thirty minute show then that would be taken into consideration for sure. Absolutely, Tara. What well, that's something that we'll have to tweak in our in our um, in our description for the guidelines. Thank you for that. We're learning as we go. <laughs> Good to know. So, you know, I said half hours are typically 27 to 35. Tara, while, while we have everybody, can we clarify that this screenwriting grant also adjacent, counties adjacent, does it, will that apply here? Because Deidre is in Douglas County. So Yeah, I think it should. That's a pretty much a general rule for all of our grants. Okay. So I'll make sure it says that so I can add that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so next up, I thought I would um, show you the applicants. So I'm gonna get out of this presentation. If you go to our website, sorry, I thought I had it open. If you go to our website and you find the grants up here at the top um, and you go to Terry Rogers, both the screenwriting and the filmmakers grants are on the same page. And for both of them, you have all the information that we just talked about and more information on how to apply. But for both of them, you can see that there's a preview of the application. This brings you to a PDF. So this, I mean, it's probably hard to kind of edit this, but it gives you an idea of what we're asking. Um, so that way you know when you go into the application what we're looking for. Also, 
on the web page is the, a preview like this of our evaluation form, but I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So in order to apply this grant, you'll apply online in our grant system, which looks like this. If you've never applied to a grant before with us, you will have to create an account. And there's, there's instructions on how to do that here. Um, if you've applied before, you can use the same account um, and you can click forgot your password if you don't remember your password. But when you go into there, you'll see the application. Um, and just really briefly, I'll show you some of the things that we're looking at are project description, plot summary, artistic pre uh, whoa, approach, creative community, audience and community impact, advancement of professional development, and a budget. We'll also ask for your resume and some work samples. So really quick on the budget. I keep, ugh, I keep having you back, sorry. I should just have both tabs open. So we do have a budget template if you would like to use it. It's not required. So if you have your own budget, um, don't feel like you have to use ours. But the template is here. I can't open this in a new tab. And um, Steph, do you want to talk about budgets at all? I will say for our end, um, one thing that we always look for in budgets is that your expenses and your income are matching. Um, but beyond that, I would let Steph say anything else about, about making a budget or applying with a budget. Um. I just want to make a note since Gautam is on this webinar, great budget last year. I mean, this is this part is actually super important because it's giving the committee an idea of that you've really thought this through well and being that $10,000 is only probably only part of your income for the film maybe it's all of your income for the film and that's fine but all of these numbers need to add up to what your income will be for the film so that everything is 100 percent balanced um, your expenditures and income are balanced completely the the committee is going to look for that to make sure that you really understand the project that you're approaching um, it won't throw the committee off if 10,000 is even a small part of the budget that you will need to accomplish the project that you have it in your in your vision. Um, but but by that same token, if you are planning to use $10,000 and that's the max of your budget, that's okay too. Um, it's just that the really important thing is that all of the expenditures that you're identifying do balance with the income and the income meaning like you could crowdfund for part of it and and maybe you haven't done so yet but you have a goal and you need to put the number the goal number in there um, you're going to raise five thousand dollars okay so that'll be in your income category or you are being gifted by an investor or a family member uh one thousand dollars so you can have many income line items and just again lastly that that has to be equal to your income has to match what your expenditures will be. That's what the committee is going to be looking at the most. Um, we we want to, I think, and just, I guess, just a note, I'm not on the committee. I will sit during all the committee convenings to make sure that I'm there for questions, for support, for observations. I do give my two cents. I do note some things that I want to make sure everybody understands or or if they're kind of maybe not looking at part of something that I think they need to be looking at I just bring it up as, as a point of conversation and awareness um, this this just has to make sense and it has to show it, it also shows that you're you know serious about your work um, so the budget is just don't don't think that this isn't an important part it is an important part. 
So this is just the template that we've provided. It's pretty simple. So it's totally understood if you have your very own uh, or your own uh, software system that, that shoots out a budget. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Steph. And I wanted to point out too that the Screenwriting Award also has an application preview. And so this gives you an idea of what we're asking for here, the genre, the screenplay, a summary, and if you want demographic questions, but those are optional. So very straightforward on the screenwriting application. Any questions about the applications? I know um, that was oh, yes, go ahead. providing a, a work sample. Like if if we've done other things on films but never directed, um, what would qualify as a sample for that? Let's go to that area. That's a very good question. Um, we had a couple people last year submit samples of work that they acted in or they helped produce on. I, and I think just to be honest, acting in something didn't carry as much weight as a project where somebody was a producer on it. Um, or we are hoping to see some examples of you directing something. So this is not supposed to be a first time director's grant, just early career. So we're hoping you have something that's in your past that you have you have been the visionary helm for. Um, I do think maybe support materials wise, if there's only one of those, then, then I think that you should consider putting in something else like that you've worked on that you've produced and, and, and then just make notes about how, how you were, you know, a major part of making that happen. One of the things that, that Arts KC and I want to make sure of is that we really, really want to see the finished work. We want to make sure it crosses the finish line. Um, and we, we want to be able to show these, you know, showcase the work, showcase the artists for years to come. And so that finish line part is what, that's why I say that about the actor versus producer examples. We, we want to make sure that you're going to be able to lead this project and um, producing is, is, a, is a project leader for sure. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So you can dig into this a little bit farther by, by checking out the website. Um, I hope that's helpful. And if you have any questions that you think of later, feel free to shoot us an email. Um, we're happy to help you through the application process as much as we can. And, okay. and we'll, we will oh, talk about ahead. this later, but make the case for yourself. If something's not fitting 100% in the, the boundaries of these words, make sure to ask Tara, reach out and ask her because we want to be able, we really want to be able to consider you, believe it or not we 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 do so it's sometimes things are worth having a conversation yeah for sure okay i think after applications um we were going to talk about evaluation so arts kc how we evaluate grants is we put together committees that are made up of community volunteers for these filmmakers grants, as I said earlier, we really we get film professionals. Um, I think we'll have some from the committee last year and they are listed on the website. So last year we had Lonita Cook, she'll be coming back. I just looked at the list and now I can't remember who else is coming back. Is it Gretchen maybe? But, um, Oh, you're muted, Steph. Sorry, I was just reading off of the page. Gretchen McCourt, who uh, moved back to the Kansas City area from LA. She's a co-founder of the National Women in Entertainment uh, nonprofit. And they also do these really big, cool uh, like conferences. She is also the COO of MoviePass, if you've heard of MoviePass. 
Uh, Veronica Lamcar is our uh, local executive director of the Kansas City Film Fest. Um, Lenita Cook's back, Critics, Critics Choice Association member. She's a, a writer. She's a film and theater critic. Um, you've probably seen her on television, but she also seems to be emceeing like a million events around town. So you might see her live a lot of the time. We're, we're adding some more committee members, but those are the returning committee members that we have gotten confirmations from. And Morgan Damron is a writer and director, and she's also a film professor. Um, she is uh, having a baby, so she is not going to uh, participate uh, this year as a committee member. Yeah, and I think I think we might have Andrea Young back as chair. I haven't asked yet, but okay. I mean, gives you an idea. This gives you an idea of the caliber of professionals that we have on the committee, and that's something to think about too. Even if you're on the fence about about applying, one reason to apply would be to get your work in front of these these established filmmakers and film professionals. So that's something to think about. Um, and we get together, and they read all the applications and they score them and write comments. And then we meet and discuss the applications for like three plus hours. And they ultimately come to a decision um, that on who to fund, which we then get approved by the Arts KC board. But just so you know, it's, it's not Arts KC that decides, it's not necessarily the KC Film Office that decides, it's these professionals that come together and bring their diverse set of expertise to make the decision. And what they're evaluating on is listed here. I mentioned it briefly earlier, but they're looking at artistic excellence, and this is for filmmakers grants. They're looking at artistic excellence, career and community impact, feasibility and budget, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and regionality. And other things might come up in the discussion, but this is the baseline for what the committee looks at. And if you want to see exactly how they're scoring, you can look at the evaluation form. So obviously anybody who has a conflict of interest does not um, review certain, certain applications if there's a conflict, but you can see the questions that they're asked, what they're looking for, um, and how what form they're using to score. So this is, I think this is helpful if I was applying, I would look at this and make sure that when I'm applying, I'm convincing the committee that I'm a good fit for this funding and that I can take at least something in all of these boxes. So I would refer to this as you're applying and kind of make sure that when what you're writing fits in with this form. And so a committee member can say, oh, yep, I see career and community impact. I see how this is has regionality and and that's that's my suggestion anyway. And hopefully this is helpful for when you're writing to see what they're looking for. And also for, oh my gosh, I gotta keep going back. We also have the form for the screenwriting award um, under evaluation. So there we're looking at premise, plot, characters, dialogue, regional relevance and or diversity, equity and inclusion, and then presentation. And that evaluation form is on the website as well. So you can see the questions that they're looking for um, and all those, all those points within those evaluation criteria. Any thoughts or questions on that? Okay. No, I'll comment while you're getting back to the presentation. That committee is being formed now, so we don't have a list of people on the committee, but we're we are looking for and and confirming screenwriters with experience to be the readers for for that committee. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was about to ask. And also with the uh, <clears throat> for the for the pilot submissions um what type of what do we have to bring like our show of work i guess like what like other screenplays that we've written or shorts mm -hmm. or what no no, no this yeah it's really it's it's the work speaking for itself 
cool copy so, that yeah. yeah it's yeah. it's so much more slender than the other grant and it's less i mean really and and maybe that's a tweak we want to consider for next year it's less about you as a writer and your history as a writer and more just about the script that you submitted yeah yeah it's i mean it's only a thousand dollars so our thinking is we're, we don't want you to jump through so many as many hoops as compared to the Terry Rogers grant, which is ten thousand dollars. Want you to pay some of your bills. <laughs> That's yeah. what we want because it takes yeah. time to do stuff, and you never get money for that. Not almost never. Not not never. But who makes money in this business? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's almost. I've been calling it an award rather than a grant because it's kind of just a contest who has the, you know, who has the screenplay that best fits our criteria and you get an award. You don't have to prove that you did anything with it. You don't have to say, I'm going to use this money to apply for other contests or to, to finish it or to hire, you, you know, you don't have to say, you don't have to prove anything, um, what, which is different than Terry Rogers. With Terry Rogers, we're giving you $10,000 and we're saying you have to use this for production or post-production it's a lot of money for us at Arts KC. It's our biggest grant that we give. Um, so we're saying we expect you to use it in this way. I mean, we trust that you are the best fit for this funding. And so we obviously want to support you and what you're doing, but do show us what you did, show us how you did it. Um, so there's more stipulations because it's a bigger amount. With the screenwriting, we're saying, love your script. Here's a thousand dollars, congratulations. And that's pretty much it. Sorry, go ahead, Tom. All right, sorry, my my brain's a little mashed potatoes from jet lag. So I'm gonna ask what may be a really obvious answer. But so could I submit one script to the Terry Rogers grant and then a completely other different script to the other grant or I have to just pick one of them to apply to? You have to pick one. Got you, all right, just confirming that, <laughs> thank you. No problem. Yeah, we're we're kind of sticklers about that at Arts KC, just because we want to make sure that more people get grants. Um, it's kind of embedded in our in our grant process because we have limited funding to give out, and so we want to see. We kind of want to spread the impact between different people. So we do that in all of our grants. We say if you get this grant, you can't really apply for another grant in the same fiscal year. You can't get too so that's um that's kind of an arts KC thing because we have limited funding. So yeah, applying just to one or the other. Other questions about evaluation or the application or anything like that? These are great questions. This is why we do this. Um, I have a question. Um, if we, it, since it is an opportunity to get a script in front of um, professionals and that doesn't come very often, especially for early career screenwriters, would it be possible to send the script in and say, like, I'm not hoping to be evaluated for the award because I'm think I would like to um, submit to the $10,000 one with the actual project, but I do have a script that it would be cool to get some feedback on. I. I don't think this time uh, that will be an opportunity for you with okay. this particular committee because that they they'll have a job to do and okay. that we don't know how many will come in. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, but I'm glad that you want feedback because that is important. That's so, so important. And we do have, there are screenwriters in town. There's a screenwriting group in town. So why don't Marissa, we can talk a little bit more about that offline too. Okay. Great. Um, Thank you, Steph. But I like that you're thinking that way for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm in a screenwriting screenwriters group. You should hit up Christy Henry. She follows, she coordinates that for us. Uh, she's amazing. Where can she get a hold of Christy or the group? Uh, I guess Facebook's the thing. But uh uh I, I can I'll I'll like message somewhere in this app. I don't know how to use this, but I'll message like her number to you or something. You you want to, you can send it to me and I can share it with Marissa. Yeah, I'll do that. Or, or I can ask Christy for her permission and then, and then give it to Marissa. Yeah, that's <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> great. Thank y'all. I appreciate it. 
And I did want to say too, so um, another reason to apply for the grant, even if you're not sure, you know, it's a good fit, even if you're not sure if you're going to get it or not, you know, maybe you're on the fence. Um, we do offer feedback to individuals who apply and are eligible and don't receive a grant. It's, it's optional. You don't have to meet with me, but I'm, I'm happy to meet with anyone who applies and go through the feedback from the committee. So we have the comments that they make in the online grant system as they're reading. And we also have notes from the discussion that I can share. So um, I'm glad that you asked that. And it's, Steph is so right that it's so important um, to get feedback. And we actually did have someone who applied for Terry Rogers who didn't get it, but met with me, got feedback, and then received a different grant from us. So it can help. And um, you never know what could come from it. So we do offer feedback if you do not receive the grant. And someone I else is going to connect with the screenwriting group, by the way, it's in the chat. And I have one more question um, that's similar to the directing question. If the screenwriter has never written a screenplay before, but does have other published works, say in like a newspaper or like a stand-up comedy show, like stand-up. I can't hear you. Sorry, oh. I think you, you're you muted. There we go. It was undone. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, I had a question similar to the director question. If the screenwriter hasn't written a screenplay before, but they have um, published works like in a newspaper that are comedic or like a stand-up comedy routine that they performed and, and wrote that's in like a PowerPoint presentation. Can they submit like other samples that aren't necessarily, okay. Well, and for screenwriting, you don't have to submit work, other work samples. You just submit the script itself. Is that? Does, or does it help at all though, just to show like the creativity and like, oh, no, or sorry. just like so, too much? Yeah, it's going to be script only for that for that particular category. I'm sorry, I was thinking you were thinking of the other grant because those anything supplemental like that could could help um, in the other grant category. But this is good. These are good questions and it gives us as we go through this process this first year with the screenwriting grant. I think we will not forget that you had questions like this, and this could really inform how we do it next year too, depending on how this goes. But it is very, very cut and dry for the screenwriting one, script only. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes this year on that front. Definitely. Okay, the only other slide I have, I have two more about tips for making your app stand out. And if you want to get started, and then I can jump in too at the end. Yeah. Um, so what the PDF that Tara pulled up with all of the questions that will be asked inside of the portal. Um, one of the tips for you so you don't go cuckoo crazy is maybe writing it out using that PDF because there, there, there are online boxes where you fit everything and they expand as you write. That kind of stuff just drives me bonkers. I can't write in them as effectively as I can write like on a regular document. That's just probably my issue, um, but that's just a little tip. The other thing is that, and I'm not a judge on the committee, I'm an advisor and, and a supporter, but I what I remember of the committee discussions is the script, uh, the short script matters heavily, uh, the budget matters heavily, and then the personal stories. So if you can be very candid with this group about you and why, um, not just why you want to receive it, but why you're doing what you what you do. I, I think that giving them an idea of the fully rounded artist that you are and human that you are um, is really helpful to the committee because then they're they're not thinking of you as just another, you know, grant applicant. You know, five five fifty. You know, you become a, a person that they really want to champion and that desire to see the work. I know that by the end of those really really long conversations, I mean we were distraught over how much we really wanted to see the work happen uh, for 
I mean, I say everybody, literally everybody, but there were some people who just scored so close to each other and it was like, oh, but I really want to see that work. That script was amazing. You know, like that vision is so amazing. Um, or the story of that person's journey to get from here to there is just, we're rooting for you. So what's cool about that is that even if you aren't the grant winner, you get the champions. And sometimes champions come quietly in your life and are rooting for you and you've never met them before. And some of them, you know, they may want to talk to you afterwards about, about the materials you submitted and, and what their what their reactions were, if, if they have bits of advice for you or just hopes, uh, you know, for your future. So those really personal ones, personal journey ones, um, I think made a great impact on that committee. Did I cover that? I'm sorry, I've got all these words covered up. Let me just make sure I'm covering all of the, yeah, I think that I did that. And I think just one more, one, one more thing. I know that, that it's a little bit strict on what work samples are considered. If you are nearly a first time director, try to put something in there you've directed. If you haven't directed anything, grab your phone and put together a scene right now. I mean, I'm serious. It will count if you've been in charge of creating something and you're the director of the piece. This doesn't have to have been on television. This doesn't have to have gone to, to a festival necessarily. Um, those things will, will weigh into it. But if, if you, we need to see something you've directed that at least one something, any, anything else to support you as an artist, definitely share that too. Um, you can share um, your mood boards, you can share sketches, you can, you know, do all of that too. But, um, and I, I know it says no commercials and no music videos. I get it. If, if, if those are not, they're not supposed to be allowed. But if you've directed something and you, you need to make your case and say, I really need this as my secondary sample because it's so, so good. It's so cinematic. It's telling a story. So what's the big difference, Tara? Sorry, nobody will talk to you like that. Um, then I, you know, then make your case and we'll discuss it and it, it may be allowed. Um, I think it likely would be, especially if it's not your primary piece of, uh, of support material. I think, yeah. And I was just going to say, um, give yourself plenty of time to, you might work on it. And I know some people don't, they just don't work this way, but it's my suggestion to give yourself plenty of time and maybe have some of your colleagues read over it too, and just make sure it makes sense. Um, make sure that what you're trying to say is coming, coming across um, and really make your case. You know, it can be somewhat argumentative writing or um, I forget the other word I'm looking for, but it, it can be a little bit different than writing like an artist statement or, or um, you want to make sure to be very clear and specific about what you're trying to do so that every person on the committee understands because anything that's confusing can work against you in a committee. So be clear, be specific elaborate, give plenty of details, and, and really convince the committee that you're a good fit for the funding. And if you have any questions about budget, you might reach out to me or Steph, because I know, like Steph said, last year there were some, some budgets that were kind of contentious for the committee. So don't, um, don't overlook that complete. question. Yeah. Or, uh, I think that mostly we got things that weren't reconciled. The income didn't match the expense. And so the committee's like, well, what do we do with that? So that's one thing this year, we wanna just kind of hammer that a little bit harder. Your income and your expense, it has to be reconciled completely for the purpose of this application. And it should be reconciled in real life. We all know filming has its issues. So you pivot as needed. So, and you can put in a budget what you're contributing to. If you think, I mean, I'm going to raise this much. Hopefully, I get this grant, which is ten thousand, and then anything left over, I'm I'm going to foot the bill. I mean, hopefully, you don't have to foot the bill so much, but you can put income as personal contributions, and that's what you're going to pay for. 
so that it so that it balances if that makes sense yeah it's almost like the judges aren't going to judge you on where your income's coming from they just want to see that it's all reconciled that you've thought it through this is what you're spending this is what you're getting and you're going to be able to afford to get the project across the finish line yeah yeah exactly okay um do you want to speak to these points stuff ah yes please okay so with the idea with of the end in mind say say somebody sees your short film uh and wants to pick it up and put it somewhere those people are going to need to know that all of your releases are legitimate and legal so that they don't have to go back and try to find a person or a brand and get clearance for it so make sure all your permits, all of your rights, your contracts with locations, your contracts with your talent, your contracts with your crew, they are all organized and together. Um, that's a part of doing the project anyway. And we just want to make sure that if and when things happen for you, that it's the easiest possible path forward. Um, I want to work with the winner and find out, you know, we'll, I'll do a one-on-one -on -one with probably as many of the applicants as, as would like to, but I also, with the winner, want to sit with the winner and try to find people in the industry. Um, us and usually these people are like in LA or in New York who can have a touch-based relationship with them after they uh, are granted. And maybe it's like a specific session with like a bunch of questions you have about going into production, or maybe it's about distribution, maybe it's about funding, but we have contacts with people and we want to be able to connect you with those people. It doesn't mean you'll have a relationship, like it'll be up to the, the people that I connect you with, whether or not they want to tuck you under their little wing and, you know, t talk to you once a month. But for sure, we want to get you together with somebody one or two times and have a really constructive conversation in areas that will impact you. So we'll talk about that after you're granted. We'll probably talk about it uh, a couple of different times as you're going through your process. But I wanna make sure to just be a support system for you in that way and try to find some, some people that um, have information that will be useful to you. Um, oh, and other grants to consider. Like um, one of our applicants last year was not the winner but went on to apply for and receive an inspiration grant. And she is making a film or working on a film with the money from that grant. There's also Mid-America Arts Alliance. They have different grant opportunities. Missouri Arts Council does and Charlotte Street Foundation. Those are all local and regional options where you can find some grant money. Um, and, then, and then if you do like I do, I just have a Google uh, alert to film grants. So I try to see what's out there as much as possible. And if I'm, you know, talking with somebody or working with somebody and it's a good fit for them, I'll just be like, oh man, I saw that yesterday. Let me forward that on. Um, there is uh, something that, is the flywheel still a, a newsletter that goes out, Tara? It's not an Arts KC one, but it's an Artist Inc. Inc. one. I think it is, but they usually have grant, um, different artist grants, which does include film in their newsletter that they put out every single month. There's always grant um, opportunities there. So look for that from Artist Inc. It's called Pushing the Flywheel is the name of their newsletter. Um, that's it for this page. Also, um, Kimmy asked if oh. directing for the theater could be included in a work sample. What do you think, Tara? I, I don't know. It has to be on video for us to to watch it. Is it something, Kimmy, that is was put on video? So therefore it is like a film, like a film of a of a performance? That would be my question too. Because we we're really looking for a non-first time director for this shorts project. So yeah, yeah I think you're a director, absolutely, if you're a theater director, but we, we need to see the sample. The, the committee's gonna need to see the sample on video, so. Yeah, that's what I would say. If it's a, it's a film of the theater sample, then 
yeah, that'd be great. And you might just, you know, kind of make that case. Like I haven't you have to make the case because it's still different than making a film, all the parts and pieces and departments. Some are similar, some are different. So I think it's about making the case. Thank you, Dr. Karma. Dr. Karma is the executive director of the Black Archives, and I just met with her. She's made Thank you. You're this welcome. was wonderful. It's oh, very good. <laughs> She's got you. some film projects up her sleeve. So I, we yes. do. We yes. do. This is wonderful. Appreciate you. You're welcome. Bye -bye. Have a great day. Stay Bye. cool. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So I that's all I have. Um, we can we scheduled this till 1.30 because I thought there'd be questions. Yeah, um, we so on the way, though. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. I have sure. a question, actually. Go ahead. Um, you may have mentioned it, too. Uh, how are you going to announce the winners? Or do you how do you get in contact with the people who's granted? We, we I usually communicate over email. Okay. Um, you'll have to submit your email to apply. Right, right, right. So... Just all and then we announce it on social media. Um, Steph will announce it on her social media too, I'm sure. And we'll have a reception. And we, if, yeah, if anyone picks it up local media wise, I think last year, last Brian year, did an interview with the pitch, maybe. Yeah, we'll do a press release and we'll spread it around to local and regional media also. A lot of times yeah. they picked up the story, a couple people picked up the story, you know, that there was a winner, but I, I think a lot of outlets were interested in, well, when the project's done, let's revisit this so that we have something to show off with, you know, the winner. But now that we're in our second year, it might be a little bit different where they might be able to, they, you know, to have a video piece with their, with their package, maybe, maybe, maybe we, in the pitch, we use one of your work samples. We'll, we'll work on that with you though. So it, so it's something that you approve of us sharing with the media. We yeah, want as much coverage nice. about this as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Vadels, thank you so much for joining us on your lunch break. Um, please don't hesitate to email Tara and I or call me if you have questions. Um, and, and the deadline is in just a little over a month. So good luck to all of you. I cannot wait for this new grant cycle to start and I cannot wait to give a total of $21,000 away to people in film. It's awesome. And just, uh, this is an aside, this is not about the grant, but um, just a note for every, everyone who's following the Missouri Film Incentives, the governor has until the 14th of July to sign the bill, but it doesn't mean if he doesn't sign it, it doesn't mean we won't have an incentive. If he doesn't sign the bill, we will still have an incentive. If he vetoes the bill, then we won't. All signs are pointing to he's either going to sign it or not sign it, but he will not veto it. That's the word we're getting from the street from all different sections, all different parties and all different organizations at this moment. But still, if you feel like it, and we'd like you to until the 14th, feel free to reach out to the governor's office. I have done so myself uh, three to 15 times. <laughs> I am. He should just sign it. But that's so exciting. Yeah. Okay. And your mayor's office, things are happening for film in Kansas things, City. Things are happening. They, I think uh, they have a vision for us and it's going to grow over time. So that's a good thing. We're getting, we're getting investment and we're getting interest from leadership here. So that's good. Awesome. Well, if there are no other questions, I will give you back a few minutes of your day. I put our emails in the chat in case you don't already have them. So if you think of something later, feel free to reach out. Um, but thank you so much for coming. And we're really excited to see all the applications and to give out some money. Yay. Thanks, thank Tara. You. Thanks, Arts KC. Thank you, Steph. Thanks, thank all you of all. you. Good luck. Bye. Bye. All right, I'll see you later.